hours following the conclusion of the presentation. Also, everyone that's joined, uh, the meeting today was placed into listen-only mode. So if you're trying to talk to us, we cannot hear you. Please use the chat or the Q&A functionality within the WebEx console to submit any questions or thoughts as they occur to you. We do have some time at the end reserved for Q&A. I would also encourage all of our attendees to uh, check us out, give us a like or a follow on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn, all great places to keep up to date with the latest and greatest news, announcements, uh, releases, promotions, and more uh, coming to Unitrends from uh, coming to our community, excuse me, from Unitrends. Hopefully a number of folks uh, saw our version 10.4 release uh, last week. Some really nice enhancements and some improvements to the product um, in that release. And lastly here, uh, all of our attendees are going to be entered into a raffle. As the, uh, the name implies, we have $500 worth of prizes to uh, give away today. So there are going to be five lucky winners uh, that will each receive a $100 Amazon gift card e-prize. Um, so keep an eye out on your email for uh, news. Uh, and just going to pause for a second here. It looks like we do have uh, some issues with the audio. Um, so let me double check here. Bear with me just one second. I'm going to pull my screen down and just double check here. All right, excellent. And Stephen looks like with call in um, is totally fine here. So just give me a moment here. I'm just going to chat to one of our attendees, help them fix audio. Uh, I am uh, running solo today, so I appreciate everyone's patience. Uh, bear with me just one second. All right, so I just posted into uh, the chat uh, the call in toll-free numbers, and I'm actually going to post this for all attendees. If you are having any issues with the audio, we highly recommend uh, connecting via phone, and those instructions have been placed into the chat here. Excellent. So I apologize for any inconvenience, but please do. Uh, we recommend calling in via phone here to the chat, and I've posted those instructions here uh, so that you can connect safely to the meeting. Uh, given that we're a couple of minutes behind here, let's jump right in and get started. Um, for folks that are a little bit newer to Unitrends or are just kind of checking us out for the first time, I always like to introduce the company and, and let folks know a little bit about uh, where we've come from. Unitrends has been in this space for a while. Ned, it's great to have you. Thanks so much for chatting in here. And uh, Unitrends has been in this space for a while, originally founded in 1989 by Dr. Steve Schwartz, was helping another number of customers in the healthcare and medical fields uh, protect Unix systems at that time. In the late 80s, there was not an adequate uh, data protection solution in the marketplace for Unix as he saw it, so he went about architecting and building out uh, his own proprietary solution. Uh, now, today, uh, now today with 30 years of, of evolution and innovation, uh, that has become what Unitrends is today and more than 30,000 customers across the globe uh, trust Unitrends for their data protection and their disaster recovery needs. We're helping those users protect a combined uh, excess of two exabytes of their uh, of their data. And with the Unitrends Cloud, a proprietary uh, manufacturer's managed solution, we are going to be talking more at length about the Unitrends Cloud. We're managing over 100 petabytes of customer data. It's a really exciting solution. I think that with a lot of the information and transparency that's available today versus even just three or four years ago when it comes to cloud native solutions, um, there's a lot less uh, reticence and concern around privacy and security. So we've seen a lot of adoption. The Unitrends Cloud actually this year was our fastest growing um, uh, kind of subset of our portfolio. We saw users adopting Unitrends Cloud with more frequency uh, than any of our other solutions this year. So it's something that we're really excited to share a little bit more about. I do want to make mention of our customer support organization. They do an absolutely fantastic job backing uh, all of our users across the globe. They are available 24 by 7 by 365 based right here in the U.S. Uh, Co-load with our research and development teams for a unified support experience. That is, for example, our version 10.4 release uh, was just released last week. A user migrates to 10.4. They're having issues uh, with one of the new features potentially. They contact support here, and that engineer has the benefit of being able to hop right across the hall 
all, bounce ideas, best practices, new workarounds off of the folks that are in there writing the source code. So a really unified experience. They maintain a rolling 98% customer satisfaction rating. It's not a metric that we cherry pick from our best month. Uh, a number of years ago, it's an ongoing rolling metric from the CEO of our organization on down. Uh, everyone has visibility into the performance of that organization. It's something that we place a tremendous amount of investment visibility and pride on. So just a little bit about the company here, but really want to start delving into uh, some of the recommendations and solutions. If you were able to join us last week, we explored a lot of trends from uh, the Unitrends cloud survey, from some other um, industry-wide surveys through Dell EMC, through IDG, through Cloudender. They're an AWS service provider partner. So we want to look a little bit more closely at some of those key findings and, and talk to you about how Unitrends has really aligned our solution and our delivery to support some of those initiatives and some of those industry-wide trends. I think that the biggest challenge and, and one of the really startling realizations is that even with the advancements in technology, when we look at um, you know, global data protection, continuous data um, replication, that always on availability, um, organizations are still impacted negatively by downtime. And it was a, uh, a slight majority uh, that was, or a, a large minority, excuse me, that was impacted by downtime this, previously, uh, this previous year. 42% of respondents still running into some issue or some uh, problem resulting in an outage or a disruption to those local systems. And as we've talked about at length in previous sessions, that has significant cost to the organization. Gartner estimates that the average instance of unplanned systems downtime is about $9,000 per minute. And remember that we're taking into account here a number of different factors. Certainly the organization's inability to transact or drive revenue when mission critical systems are rendered unavailable, but we're also taking into account the impacts on employee productivity, the cost of recovery, and that intangible cost to the brand or the organization if we're making headlines for the wrong reasons or there's a perceived oversight or vulnerability. Is there a risk that our current customers or prospects would start moving over to our competitors in those cases. So it remains that the data and the availability of systems are, are two of the most important or the most valuable assets that an organization has today, second really only to people. And in today's world, really driven by data, it's critically important that we keep those systems available. What I thought was interesting is that in a lot of cases, when we think about downtime or outages, it's not necessarily those headline-grabbing incidents. Uh, natural disasters, uh, ransomware, malware attacks really re uh, represent a very small percentage of overall uh, issues or outages. Much more common do we see human errors, issues with software compatibility, errors in the server room that are impacting our production systems. Maybe we've got you know, multiple DPUs that are competing for transaction logs, and all of a sudden we've got an unusable backup file. We've applied a patch update to one uh, system here not compatible now with our recovery infrastructure and we're not able to land or rehydrate our backups on that target due to some incompatibility with versions. All these little nuances and changes to our infrastructure throughout the year, throughout day-to-day -day regular operations can result in impact. So when we think about some of these unexpected failures, and we've got a great checklist to kind of go through and review with your organization um, or with your teams posted on unitrends.com, what we're really driving towards is, you know, is your solution one that can actively monitor and, and really be proactive about monitoring the status of the backups and recovery uh, with the ability to identify issues, determine the root cause of those failures before backup even runs or before restore is needed? Do we have that ability to intervene as well, correct common issues? More often than not, we're seeing errors with VSS writers or uh, dependency between multiple sh machines where the organized boot has been tested leading to recovery failures and impacting that downtime. How do we get visibility into those, uh, those errors or those potential risks and have the ability to correct those, um, those errors without user intervention? And that's part of what we're driving towards at Unitrends with self-healing software. Uh, the 
advanced analytics or the machine learning should know enough about how to identify those common issues as well as how to resolve it, given that you know, things are going to be defined within a set of parameters here. But we're looking to drive down or eliminate the need of user intervention. We're working and keep your eyes and ears peeled in Q1 for some enhancements and some releases along the software side of things. But another example for this active monitoring is we implemented with our self-healing hard drive. So Unitrends, there's flexibility in how you can deploy either a physical appliance or a virtual appliance. But if you choose to use a Unitrends physical appliance, the hard drives are equipped with uh, self-healing technology and proactive monitoring. So if a, a sect within those drives is starting to fail, uh, the drive will attempt to repair itself internally. There are some remediation protocols that the drive will run through. If it cannot correct or solve the root of that issue, it phones home to our support center and we can take steps to overnight a brand new drive. You come in the next morning with a, with a package from Unitrends, you're thinking, we didn't order anything from Unitrends. You open it up. There's a hard drive in there and a, and a note there, hey, call our 800 number for support. We're going to walk you through how to hot swap the drive in day three. We've gotten indications that it's starting to fail. With the implementation of this technology earlier this year, we've reduced the amount of drive-related or hardware component-related support cases by 90%. Again, just one of the ways in which we're looking to streamline and reduce some of that manual intervention when it comes to the day-to-day -day tuning and managing of the backup environment. And that's a piece here as well. We talked a little bit, or I hinted at, you know, some of those more common issues, uh, issues with VSS writers, multiple DPUs that are competing for the same logs. For organizations that are using kind of a mix of technologies to achieve their overall backup or recovery strategy, we've worked with a lot of folks that and kind of unconsciously Frankenstein solutions together. They've got a software product that they're landing the backups on secondary storage for deduplication. They've, um, they've, they've connected in a proxy server for reporting functionality. Maybe you've got different uh, portions of your environment to conduct different processes as it relates to some of the overall uh, backup and recovery tasks that you're looking to achieve. Unfortunately for a lot of folks, by piecemealing these solutions together, they've found themselves as having invited in unnecessary complexity and risk where they or their teams are burdened with what we'd consider really low value IT tasks. Backup in an ideal world is not going to touch or have much of an impact to the bottom line. When recovery fails, it can certainly impact that bottom line, but backup is really that kind of passive operation in the background, our, our security uh, or our insurance policy, if you will. But in Frankensteining these pieces together, inviting in this unnecessary complexity and risk, teams are burdened with some of those low value tasks from even just dealing with multiple vendors, uh, the additional maintenance, maintaining different disparate elements of their solution. We certainly hope that folks aren't experiencing that finger pointing from multiple vendors, but it is things that we've seen or observed. When we're having an issue with a restore, we call up our software vendor, they say, no, that's really a problem with the storage device and vice versa. You've got that back and forth between vendors. We're aiming to break down those silos by delivering our customers an all-in-one solution, not just locally, but overall as you're looking to achieve that business continuity, you can leverage Unitrends and have uh, the backup hardware, software, cloud environment all being backed and supported, all integrated by the same vendor. So you're not going to run into some of those common issues or have that day-to-day -day, uh, maintenance by leveraging that purpose-built and really streamlined solution. One customer that, that really benefited from this story was Agrex uh, Incorporated. They're a leading uh, grain producer out in uh, Overland Park, so out in the Midwest, Overland Park, Kansas, and their key operations were running on a number of SQL servers and Oracle DBs, really heavy DB-driven operation here. Prior to leveraging Unitrends, they were primarily getting data off-site through the use of IBM tapes and a third-party service provider uh, through SunGuard that was bringing those tapes off-site for safekeeping, but they didn't have a tremendous amount of visibility into the recovery process. They weren't able to really test DR. Once they had set the tapes off-site, it was costing them an arm and a leg to maintain these different arms of the solution, and they didn't have a tremendous amount of confidence in being able to really meet their objectives. 
They opted to deploy uh, Unitrend's Recovery Series appliance, that's our on-premise backup appliance, as well as replicating uh, mission-critical machines or workloads to the Unitrend's cloud and enrolling them in our disaster recovery as a service. In streamlining their data center footprint, they were able to eliminate the tape library and the, the cost of that rotational media, the drives there. They were able to repurpose some of those Blade servers, they eliminated the uh, pro services, saved them almost $24,000 a year by eliminating that SunGuard, but in eliminating uh, the IBM equipment, maintenance, support contracts, professional services, uh, that Unitrend solution, the appliance, the cloud, and the DRAS, we paid for ourselves in under a year at Agress. And the, um, the consultant that helped implement the design, Josh Flint, had you know, let us know that they were really thrilled um, at the results here, the ability to drive down their overall cost of ownership and drive up simplicity and a lot more visibility into the process with some of the regular reporting that they got both from Unitrends, the local hardware, as well as the DR as a service. We're going to talk a little bit more about some of that reporting as we move later on, but when we talk about that all-in-one story, we're We've got really four key pillars to our solution and a couple of complementary products that are really supporting some of the new use cases that we've observed in the industry today for cloud-based backup. Excuse me, I'm just uh, fighting a little bit of a cold here. Um, but with Unitrends, it's going to start, start with deployment of local backup. And again, there's flexibility for our users in how you can deploy the solution. Purpose-built capacity-based hardware in which the backup software, compute, and storage is all being delivered by Unitrends in a pre-tuned and optimized appliance. <laughs> reporting functionality, recovery testing, data reduction, your compression, your deduplication, your encryption are all being powered by that appliance. You're not standing up proxies, backing in, back ending in secondary storage. It's all self-contained within that backup appliance. Now, if you're looking to leverage existing compute and storage resources, you can deploy our software as a virtual appliance on top of your favorite hypervisor. In terms of getting that data off-site for recovery, there are a number of options for our users as well. You can replicate to a DR site that you're managing on your own, landing backups from, from one Unitrends appliance to another, and you can mix and match here and go from hardware to software, software to hardware, um, really any combination of the aforementioned. You can also leverage public cloud infrastructure. That's one of the most popular use cases for uh, DR sites today is landing backups in public cloud infrastructure, eliminating the need for managing a co-location, maintaining that secondary equipment. Uh, there may be auxiliary staffing, additional costs or fees associated there. Really streamline some of that operations by leveraging public cloud infrastructure. You can deploy Unitrend's backup software from the AWS or the Azure marketplaces uh, to serve as a replication target or to back up uh, running instances or workloads that you may have in the public cloud environment. From a long-term retention standpoint, you can leverage public clouds, Unitrends appliances with GFS or long-term retention settings. You can also leverage the Unitrends cloud, and that's really where we come into play. Our cloud environment was built and designed to deliver two key services to our users. Uh, the first is that long-term retention and data management. The second being that disaster recovery as a service a no-touch, a hands-free failover process in which our cloud core teams maintains the backup in the DR environment. We fully seeded and mapped through what recovery needs to look like. We're testing against it regularly to ensure that operations go smoothly. And again, complementing our core solutions are our spanning backup for 365 through our sister company spanning. That's a SaaS backup solution filling in gaps along um, Office 365, uh, Google, apps and salesforce.com. We also have Unitrends Cloud Backup, which is really designed for endpoints and protecting those PCs and those mobile devices that are remote or in um, branch locations. They're not regularly connected to the primary WAN uh, where they're receiving that treatment for regular backups. We're going to talk a little bit more closely about some of those key aspects, but what this has enabled us to do is really raise the bar. Uh, your age-old rule of backup was that 3 two, one rule of backup, but in deploying Unitrends, Trends, we're uh, really recommending or best practice for our customers would be a 422 method of protection. Four copies of the data in two different formats, two of which are going off site. So what that might look like is once you've deployed the Unitrend solution, you're protecting your 
a local environment, and we've got support for over 250 applications, operating systems, and hypervisors. Again, that all-in-one solution locally for backup. That first copy is going to be that production copy. The second copy is the backups that are retained on the appliance at the local site. They're immediately available for recovery. You can take proactive measures such as building out replicas of mission-critical machines, leverage instant recovery capabilities. Um, again, these are hot backups. They're immediately available for recovery. A third copy you may go that may go off site that to your archive or cold copy uh, long term storage an air-gapped copy to safeguard against malware and ransomware, something like removable disk or tape, a public cloud target, another storage device that's not regularly connected or isn't a typical node on our network. And the last copy we would recommend is going to the recovery site or the hot site. Again, this could be a co-location that you're managing with another Unitrends appliance or the Unitrends cloud in which you're enrolling in disaster recovery as a service. So again, when we look at that overall business continuity, we're looking at it really in four steps here. The local backup, off-site recovery capabilities, long-term retention data management, as well as offering that disaster recovery as a service. So we want to really raise the bar and uh, see our customers be able to leverage that 422 really best practice for uh, data protection here. Ransomware, as we had talked about, and I'm sure as folks have seen, is a really significant a threat. A really significant threat, even in the last two weeks, a couple of uh, really significant breaches, and one such where, if the ransom was not being met at uh, after a certain time period, uh, the PII that these hackers or threat actors had stolen was going to be posted for resale on Onion and, and Tor sites. Uh, so they've really started to up the ante, but uh, we've seen a number of significant attacks and, and I think that a really, you know, proliferation of attacks this year. Um, from Sophos telling us that, you know, this is just a, a small sampling of some of the more prevalent strains that they have noticed. And the one that really stands out to me is this GAN crab over here on the right, ransomware as a service, uh, enabling these threat actors to really proliferate and spread infection. They're offering now ransomware essentially as a kit where you or I could, could find ways to, uh, through an Onion site or a Tor site, uh, have access to a kit. These developers are providing you with regular tech support, uh, product, if you will, product or code updates, and it's a small one-time fee or a small percentage of developers, but organizations outside of larger criminal enterprises, these sort of one-off threat actors, can have access to these kits, receive regular support and updates with which they can drive and start to uh, proliferate their own attacks has really made tracking frequency and sourcing some of these threats become very, very difficult because we may catch instances of these, uh, but they're not from the original or the source developers. In some cases, they're one-off uh, threat actors that had uh, had access to that particular kit. We've talked about this at length, but I think it's important really to mention and, and talk to you how Unitrends is helping uh, our customers augment their cybersecurity posture. Prevention from a backup appliance standpoint, uh, the majority of these of this code and this malicious code is being written to target Windows-based systems, target the Windows command line interface, leverage PowerShell commands as well. Unitrends is built on a hardened Linux OS kernel. So in, in addition to being targeted significantly less frequency, uh, frequently, Linux is a little bit more flexible in how you can architect out and build these storage partitions. So we're landing all of our backups in immutable storage, that is read-only storage. When Windows binary that might be contained within a bad backup is not executing when it lands on this repository. It's not impacting the files or the backup files that have already been created. We have in our 30 years of uh, doing business never lost an appliance or had an appliance taken down due to encryption or a ransomware attack. There are a number of case studies from Exco Engineering, Bethlehem Public Schools that you can reference to learn a little bit more about how Unitrends has helped customers recover from ransomware attacks. On the front end, we're leveraging machine learning and artificial intelligence by building in a, uh, a threat detection uh, really algorithm here. So we've got a machine learning algorithm that is we're taking backups regularly of the assets across your network. It establishes baseline patterns of behavior, looking at things like rates of change, the overall entropy or the randomness of the data, levels of encryption. Uh, when threat conditions are detected or those baseline patterns are broken, it triggers an alert through our UI dashboard, through email notifications, trap notifications, 
notifications uh, to alert you to machines that are behaving our customers with, with early insights into uh, behavior in the production environment that could signify threat conditions. This has enabled a lot of our customers to identify early on strange behavior, quarantine machines that were infected, uh, essentially disconnect them from the network, wipe them free of infection, and then rebuild them from a clean, tested backup. And we're driving that testing process through our recovery assurance. Again, going to talk a little bit more closely uh, about that uh, later later on. But another customer that had leveraged uh, Unitrends to escape a ransomware attack was Taylor Community Schools in Indiana. Also similar to Agrex, had been leveraging tape off-site uh, before deploying Unitrends. But they opted to streamline some of their operations with a Unitrends recovery series, uh, recovery series appliance, uh, protecting 10 terabytes of their data with a single uh, 1U rack mount appliance. They've leveraged benefits such as on-appliance recovery, instant recovery of their virtual environment, and even as their technology director, uh, Patrick, had told us, they had had an attack that had propagated to the VM that was powering their financial systems uh, through some uh, file sharing. Users had been sharing uh, bad or malicious uh, links or files. We've seen an increase in uh, phishing attacks and kind of that social engineering to propagate or spread infections. Uh, these folks, once alerted, were able to restore and recover their uh, the server that was powering those financial systems in under 15 minutes, uh, wiping the machine and then leveraging Unitrend's instant recovery to restore from a clean, tested, uh, host-level backup and turn that machine back on in just under 15 minutes uh, to identify, re remove the threat, and bring that machine back up and running. A really nice use case and one that you can read uh, more about on Unitrends.com by searching for Taylor Community Schools. When we look at the cloud, and uh, this has been one of the fastest growing kind of categories or, or use cases for a lot of backup and DR uh, needs here, we looked at IDG's uh, report from 2016, uh, really their executive summary in terms of cloud computing and across uh, for organizations that had already migrated uh, this past year. Services that were planned uh, today for cloud migration upcoming in late 2019 or early in 2020 and top priorities for 2020, some element of storage, archive, backup, DR uh, was all included in one of the top three use cases that folks had either already migrated migrated, were planning to migrate, or had set in place today. Uh, plans to migrate. And we've seen this as well over on the right popped up some results from the Unitrends cloud survey. And we've seen uh, cloud as one of the fastest growing categories as part of that backup method, taking backup copies not just from that disk-based appliance, but to a cloud target as well. And we've seen in some cases rotational disks or tapes um, really declining and folks that are starting to leverage cloud technology uh, even more so. So last, uh, last week we asked our audience, are you using cloud as part of your data protection strategy? And from our attendees, we had over 160 people on and participate. Uh, just wanted to share kind of what our audience was looking at as well. About 10% of folks had no interest or no plans to use the cloud today, and that's certainly okay. We recognize that it's not the right fit for uh, every use case or every organization. Uh, but about a third, a little over a third of our users were planning to implement a cloud solution in the next year. So something that had been put in the plans for 2020 implementation. Uh, for folks that were using the cloud today, that leading use case, about a quarter of our users were or a quarter of our attendees were already using the cloud for that long-term data retention or archiving. Uh, folks were using it as well for storage, and then smaller percentages of users using it for disaster recovery as a service, about 5%, as well as that PC uh, or endpoint backup and SaaS backup as well, about 7% of users that had started to implement cloud uh, for those specific use cases as well. So just interesting and really kind of jives, I think, with a lot of the overall industry trends, uh, what we're seeing from 
you know, some of our attendees and some of our community that have been able to come out and join us on these sessions is that they're really in line with a lot of those industry trends, starting first with archiving, you know, really low risk. We'll start to put that into the cloud, cheap and deep storage. We've certainly heard that a lot. And some other folks that are starting to recognize, hey, you know, SaaS backup, PC backup, direct to cloud, uh, really great use cases here as well, and in some cases has streamlined or simplified things for our IT teams. In, in talking about folks that are using public cloud and, and AWS, GCP, even VMware vCloud Air um, are some of the, the leading uh, service providers for that DR as a service. We do have some integration with the public cloud and we talked about how Unitrend's backup software could be deployed through the uh, through the AWS or the Azure marketplaces for uh, the retention of off-site backup copies, DR into the cloud, and for backing up those cloud-based instances. That would be required or, or um, achieved by UB software. But we've got another tool that I wanted to make mention of that I really love. I think it's a, a niche but a really fascinating use case, and that's Unitrend's Boomerang for VMware. So for folks today that are running a VMware environment, you can leverage Boomerang uh, really for cloud migration and for disaster recovery. So you would install Boomerang as a local VM within your vCenter environment. And then from there, you're going to group your other virtual machines into what Boomerang calls protection groups. And these protection groups are going to be paired with a bucket path into Azure uh, Cold Blob Storage or Amazon S3, that simple storage service. The first step or the first procedure that you can leverage is that replicate in which we would replicate the native VM blocks and uh, land them in that cloud storage bucket. So we've gotten a copy of uh, the virtual disks, either the VMDK or the VHD files that's now living within S3. So we've got a secondary copy uh, that is geo-redundant and now being stored within that cloud data center infrastructure. The second step comes in deploying those VMs. You can natively, with the Boomerang tool, deploy those VMs from S3, for example, into EC2. The great thing about Boomerang and in helping customers that don't have uh, tremendously large teams or a tremendous amount of expertise is that all of the formatting and conversioning is uh, native and performed by the Boomerang product. So it will convert that VMDK into a running AMI instance within EC2 and all of the configuration, attaching the EBS storage volumes uh, is all handled natively by the Boomerang product. It's a push button deploy. So if your goal is migration here and you want to move VMs from on-premise into the cloud, once you have replicated and deployed, you are, uh, you are set. You have migrated those workloads. You can simply let the Boomerang license expire. If your goal is disaster recovery, you would deploy in the event of that local outage or disaster. When you're ready to return the workloads to your production site, you can either restore the virtual disk blocks from cold storage back down to the vCenter environment and rebuild the virtual machine guests in that way, or the Boomerang tool can copy back and essentially reverse uh, format and migrate back down from EC2, for example, that workload and return it from an AMI instance to a running VMDK within your vCenter environment. Some really nice functionality here, and it's the pilot light uh, functionality that is keeping those costs low by leveraging low cost storage storage. Upon replicating, you don't need a running cloud instance so that meter does not start ticking for compute uh, workloads or instances until you've deployed the VM. So we're keeping costs low, leveraging that S3 storage service or service uh, storage bucket until you need to deploy the VMs themselves. So a really nice tool just wanted to make mention of uh, because it does complement our public cloud story uh, with the ability to replicate into low cost storage, deploy into production, restore the blocks from that storage volume to rebuild or restore uh, local guests or copy back those running instances and return them down to your local vCenter environment, that being with Unitrend's Boomerang. The, the other piece here is that the Unitrends cloud is, again, um, one of the fastest growing um, offerings within our solution portfolio. And there are a number of reasons. I think that we've purpose built our cloud environment. So for a lot of our customers where they're using the cloud calculators on AWS or, or Azure and you have to estimate you know, how many retrievals are you going to make, what percentage of storage are you not accessing, how much storage do you need, where is it going to live, what 
regions are right, how much redundancy. There's a lot of complexity that comes into deploying and leveraging public cloud infrastructure. We've really streamlined some of that licensing for using the Unitrends cloud, and in the model that we have delivered, it's very, very easy for organizations to estimate or predict that year-over-year -year cost of ownership, especially when we're talking about retention or disaster recovery as a service. We're able to customize that retention and down the bottom, you see that there are no egress or ingress fees. You're performing or you have the ability to perform self-service recovery of your cloud-based backups right from your local appliance at any time. Immediately, cre immediately mount and create file recovery objects in the Unitrends cloud stack to download back granular items, recover individual files and folders, or import the entire backup group down to the source appliance for a recovery of a full systems or a full system or application. This is key because for a lot of users, uh, 60 over 60 percent of users that are uh, leveraging offsite storage in a cloud target have had to recover that data. And with the public clouds, that is where some of those fees for users are really starting to come in and snowball when you're making those retrievals or bringing that data back down from the cloud target. It was 11% of folks that had to recover uh, five or more times, and that again is where you can start to see the meter or the bill really start to accumulate from those cloud targets. So the Unitrends cloud in terms of our licensing and cloud structure, really granular here. We're licensing out capacity in 500 gigabyte increments. So what's that raw footprint of data before any deduplication or compression that you want to replicate to Unitrends for archival or enrollment in our DR as a service? You determine the, the, the data size, again, 500 gigabyte increments, and determine the retention period. We offer 90 days of retention, one to seven years, even infinite. We're storing the backup copies on a GFS rotation scheme, so once that retention has been built, you'll have access to your most recent seven daily, uh, seven daily backup copies, as well as the most recent successful backup and group from uh, the trailing four weeks, 12 months, and subscribed number of years. You can easily adjust retention periods, adjust storage volumes, add more storage as you need it, scale back on storage if it turns out you're not using it, really customizable and easy to control costs and uh, the cloud environment, but we're managing that back-end environment. So by sizing out and provisioning for that retention, as you're continuing to accumulate backup copies and leveraging more and more of our storage, your cost isn't changing. We've built that into the pricing model, and that's in a lot of cases where we see those costs start to add up with the public cloud. So we've got on Unitrends.com a cloud cost calculator in which you can compare uh, Unitrends cloud costs with that with similar service from AWS or Azure. And you can see kind of a dramatic example here, but in a lot of the costs here that are accumulating, it's as those storage volumes continue to grow and as you're making retrievals. So this calculator is fully customizable. You can come in and adjust some of the criteria, the compression ratios, the usage, um, a lot of customization so you can really size and play around and say, okay, if we're looking to replicate X amount of data, we need retention for this amount of time, and we estimate that we may need to make this number of retrievals, you can compare estimates with what that would look like from public cloud infrastructure as well as with the Unitrends Cloud. So you can search the Unitrends Cloud calculator. We have uh, simple and full versions that you can access on Unitrends.com. And if you've got questions about that, um, we would love you to contact us. Our sales teams, our solutions engineers would be more than happy to walk through kind of how those formulas were uh, developed and play around and customize those so you can get an accurate idea or estimates of what those costs would look like for your organization to achieve those objectives or goals. When it comes to that cloud backup as well, we saw in the Unitrends cloud survey two new use cases that had really brought their way into the top five, and we saw those from some of our users as well. About 7% each of uh, attendees last week were leveraging cloud storage for backing up uh, PCs and devices as well as for their SaaS applications. Just a note on that SaaS piece is that Microsoft, for example, AWS as well, these other vendors are operating what they call the shared, uh, the shared model of responsibility. And hopefully this isn't um, new for folks, but again, uh, Microsoft with their Office 365 platform, for example, is guaranteeing uh, certain levels of redundancy, fault tolerance, application availability, but the administration of the application, the users, and ultimately the data 
is the responsibility uh, of the subscriber to the service. The recycle bin uh, is not an adequate data protection policy, uh, and depending on the level of your agreement with an E1 agreement, um, for example, an E1 service agreement with O365, uh, deleted items are purged uh, permanently after 30 days. So with our spanning service, you can fill in some of those gaps along the public uh, along public clouds or SaaS applications rather with that shared model of responsibility. It's a very streamlined cloud-based service, so you're not pulling data down and, and maintaining the backup copies on an archiver. Uh, they are stored within a cloud re uh, uh, cloud environment that's meeting or aligned with the same compliance regulations and mandates uh, with which the O365 service is as well. So we are fully compliant uh, with all of the Microsoft compliances that you are under when uh, leveraging their O365 service. You've got access to granular recovery, an automated backup schedule, self-service recovery in seconds. And there's some nice functionality such as cross-user restore, restoring to shared mailboxes, uh, non-destructive restores so we're not overwriting or won't overwrite anything on a particular site or within a user's mailbox. All the restores are non-destructive. You get unlimited storage with this spanning, so it's a, a per-user, per-month subscription, unlimited storage on the back end that we are managing for. You really want to make things streamlined. And the spanning tool, if you haven't taken a look at this, I would really recommend folks check it out. Really easy, easy uh, really clean and easy to use. It demos through in 10 to 15 minutes. And uh, sales is running a promotion, some really aggressive pricing on spanning uh, through the end of the year. If folks have been investigating or looking at a SaaS solution, I would, I would recommend uh, that you check that out. It's, uh, it's one of uh, our really popular offerings for folks that are starting to migrate or have migrated to Office 365. Uh, but through the maintenance of the Unitrends Cloud, we've been able to deliver a, a really um, a, a hardened version of um, one of our solutions already to meet a newer ex an existing use case. We are very, very close. Um, industry analysts through IDG and others estimate that we are close to a tipping point where as much, if not more, data will be created outside of the traditional data center uh, than inside of it by as soon as the middle of next year, by mid-2020. We've seen organizations that are increasingly uh, dispersed, distributed, mobile employees, remote warriors, folks that are working from home or in remote locations, and their devices aren't regularly connected to the WAN. We don't have a reliable way to protect and secure these endpoints. The average case of um, of uh, endpoint or device loss or theft runs an organization almost forty thousand dollars, and you might be thinking, well, hey, you know, we can replace our users, uh, you know, machines for anywhere from you know a few hundred to a couple thousand dollars, and you'd be absolutely correct. The majority of that cost is coming from IT time, uh, the impacts on productivity for both IT and the user, and the loss of the IP on that machine if it is not backed up. Almost eighty percent of that overall value that is lost is the IP or the data from those machines that's not backed up and is not retrievable. So we developed Unitrends Cloud Backup for PCs and endpoints, really focusing on file level protection for workstations. When we talk about enhancing the technology here, you don't need an appliance. It's a hardened version of our file level agent, so it's a lightweight agent that you install on the PC for a workstation, and that links directly with a replication target in the Unitrends Cloud. When we talk about some of that hardening, it is uh, suitable, and there's been some additional uh, development to this agent that's really suit made it more suitable for roaming endpoints or endpoints that are disconnecting more frequently. If you're, uh, if these devices are going on planes on the subway, we recognize that they're not going to have uh, regular connection or regular access to the internet. We don't want failed or hanging jobs, uh, so we've hardened the agent to adapt to some of those scenarios. Um, it does have today its own purpose-built interface. There is multi-tenancy enabled, so you can have users performing their own recoveries with access to the interface. Um, you can uh, leverage that multi-tenancy and, and some monthly billing capabilities. If your IT department bills other departments or business units, uh, units for services that are provided. Um, and today it's starting for up to a terabyte of protected capacity on the endpoint with 30 days of cloud retention. But we are looking for feedback from our users and from our community um, to 
Uh, understand, um, is 30 days enough? Would you like to see 90 days, 180 days? So we're looking for feedback from early users here and really listening to our community to say, okay, this is what we've designed uh, on the outset or on the release. What enhancements would you like to see moving forward? But it's starting at some really aggressive subscription pricing, $10 per device per month. Here's a screenshot of the interface. Again, very, very clean. Um, meant to be streamlined, deliver the information that you need up front, and then give you the ability to perform those recoveries either self-service or with the help of an administrator or IT help for those users. So the last piece here uh, that we really delved into last week was the state of disaster recovery as a service. And DR as a service is one of the fastest growing technologies for uh, DR from the AWS Cloud Endure survey. And Cloud Endure has been uh, uh, producing an industry survey for the last, or at least that I've seen for the last three years, maybe even longer. But since 2016, in the last three years, DRAS was their fastest growing product category, up 250 50% this year in 2019 from 2016. So I asked our audience last week as well, do you have DRAS capabilities today in which you've offloaded that responsibility or, as a, uh, or, or that service um, for uh, to another organization or a service provider. And uh, the results were varied. About 10% of our uh, attendees last week weren't interested in leveraging DR as a service today. And again, we recognize it may not be uh, the right fit or feasible for every organization or use case, but about 25% of our attendees last week uh, were not using it today, but we're currently researching DRAS technology and different providers to see if this might be the right service or benefit their organization. Uh, about another, almost another quarter of those folks had plans to implement DRAS in the next 12 months. About 12% of users were leveraging uh, Unitrends DRAS, so welcome uh, to our current customers and thank you for your continued support and participation. Uh, about a fifth of our users were leveraging public cloud. Uh, for that DR as a service, and another 12% or so were using a, a third party or another provider. So really kind of a mix of respondents, but again, the majority of folks, if they weren't using it today, had plans to implement or were currently researching that technology. The, the key thing I think that's important about DRAS is that it's not just an expensive insurance policy. Uh, from the Unitrends Cloud Survey in 2019, from this year's survey results, a large minority, 41% of our respondents failed over or had to use DRAS. And keep in mind that the Unitrends Cloud Survey is not just Unitrends customers. We offer this industry-wide. Uh, so a number of folks that may not be leveraging Unitrends and are leveraging another service provider have also had to call and make that declaration. The majority that did fail over uh, reported that, yes, it worked as intended or it was um, it was acceptable. For a small percentage of folks that did have to fail over, uh, it was taking too long or the applications didn't recover. When we look at leveraging DRAS as well, and this may seem fairly obvious, because you've outsourced this to a, uh, a, a service provider leveraging their expertise and uh, teams that are dedicated to performing their services, we've seen fewer instances of downtime for organizations that are leveraging DRAS uh, versus those that are not. And in a couple of, in, in some instances, uh, really a key part of that service is getting the networking and the failover to work correctly. More often Often than not, when we're having issues meeting SLAs or recovery times are being impacted, it's not because we hadn't received the backups or a, it was an issue with the replication. It was more issues with the networking or the recovery site and getting machines up in orchestrated fashion and rerouting that traffic to accurately deliver those workloads back to the users, helping to reroute that traffic. A big part of Unitrends here, uh, here at Unitrends in our DR as a service is that onboarding process and ensuring that the environment is going to work. So for customers that are enrolling in Unitrends DR as a service, it starts with a consulting engagement with our uh, expert teams, defining the protected systems, recovery point, recovery time objectives, ultimately our response as the vendor or the service provider. We've got multiple seeding options available to get data into the Unitrends cloud very, very quickly. And then as we're seeding that data, we're working through with our users to define things like the boot order dependencies, 
of different machines, uh, the ability to uh, bring up correctly n-tier or multi-tiered applications, configuring the network settings to mirror production, configuration of firewall uh, rules and settings, implementation or provisioning of public facing IT uh, IPs. We're setting up the environment fully in advance uh, to be prepared for when we receive that phone call. We also, as a part of that onboarding service, are defining application level orchestration scripts or tests that we will execute regularly as a part of our testing. So we run these tests regularly for our customers. Customers can call in and declare a test as well so that we can ensure that the environment is provisioned. We're able to get the IPsec tunnels uh, rerouted and you're able to reroute that user traffic. But we want to be fully prepared and identify any potential pitfalls or hurdles with that regular testing uh, before we receive that declaration or that phone call. We're delivering faster recoveries with DRAS. Organizations can recover in less than an hour. Almost twice as many organizations are recovering or having systems back available to them in less than an hour using DRAS than those that are not. A huge part of Unitrend's DRAS is the contractually guaranteed RTO SLAs. And in talking about some of that onboarding and cloud configuration, uh, practice that we're doing with our customers. It's given us a tremendous amount of confidence, so much so, and that we will contractually guarantee the RTO SLAs. And we offer three levels of our DR as a service. A premium level of service that is a one hour, RTO SLA Elite DRAS that is 24 hours, and standard, which is a best effort. You can mix and match these levels of service, uh, have certain machines that are enrolled in premium or elite, others in standard. Uh, really define find the DR environment and that service as to best fit your needs and your environment. One customer, for example, that we onboarded earlier this year uh, was an audiovisual rental service out of uh, New York, so in the greater New York area, and they had the VMs that were powering their point of sale systems and their financial software enrolled in Unitrend's premium DRAS. If there was any outage or issue locally, they wanted to have those systems up and running in under an hour so that they could maintain or resume front of store operations very, very quickly. But some less important machines uh, such as reporting, financial uh, reporting, some other uh, aspects of their environment, they said these aren't as mission critical. We really need point of sales in the financial systems. So we're going to enroll those. Everything else will work on recovery. So they were able to just enroll a couple of machines and really define that service to best fit their organization. And, and you and your organizations can as well. It's all granular. Uh, all a la carte. Pick what you need today to get started. Always add or scale back as your needs or your environment change. So what that process looks like, as we had talked about a little bit here, is we've already seeded uh, all of that data and have uh, machines or instances on reserve for you. So when we receive uh, that phone call and that declaration of disaster, we initiate uh, the spin up of the DR site. Again, this has been fully tested and reported back to you regularly and help you reroute that traffic by providing you with the IPsec tunnels, typically an SSL VPN, to reroute your users to the workloads that are now running in the Unitrends cloud. When you are ready to rebuild or refill that local site, we're going to seed a brand new appliance. As you're running in our cloud infrastructure, we're still taking backups, tracking all of those changes to uh, your infrastructure or your data. So we're going to seed those changes onto a new appliance. You've rebuilt the local site. You've gotten your new equipment from your reseller or service provider. We're ready to uh, import the backups here. We sh overnight that appliance, ship it to you so that you can start to begin local recovery, bring those systems up to date, and start to bring them uh, online. When you're ready to switch back and resume operations at the local site, we're going to tear down any last changes once you have notified us from the DR site, and we can send those to you on a seed device or over the LAN depending on size and the bandwidth available uh, at that site. So we've got a couple of different options here, but again, restoring those backup copies, bringing the data online with that final last local sync to restore systems, and you bring them online, update that networking configuration and those NICs, 
to reroute traffic back to the local site of those local workloads. We tear down the DR site, send you a new prep kit to start to capture changes and prepare for future failover or future declarations. Uh, one such customer that had leveraged this DR as a service is Safety Products. We've, we've talked about these folks, and if you've been um, on one of my previous webinars, you may have heard of these folks, but for folks that haven't, um, Safety Products is a device and equipment manufacturer for use in public works, contracting, construction, uh, and their key operations are based down out of Lakeland, Florida, so they're really kind of in Hurricane Alley. They've got a secondary site um, a little bit north of the Lakeland area in Georgia. Uh, before leveraging Unitrends, they were attempting to get some replication with VMware, uh, working using some of the native tools provided, but they can never quite get things to work. They opted to leverage existing infrastructure uh, by deploying Unitrends virtual appliances uh, at both of their sites, as well as replicating to the Unitrends cloud and enrolling some mission critical machines, including their ERP systems, in Unitrends DR as a service. Back in 2017, as Hurricane Irma had just ravaged uh, Bermuda and was making its way towards the U.S., they were tracking the storm, and five days before landfall, their CTO, Dennis Hershey, determined that it would not be safe to maintain operations at the Lakeland campus. They declared DR, so systems from Lakeland were brought online in the Unitrends cloud. He had employees rerouted to either that Georgia location or locations within the state that were out of the storm's path so that employees were not at risk going to the Lakeland, lo uh, Lakeland campus, but were still able to maintain have access to the data in the systems that had been running in Lakeland. The storm passes through. They've maintained operations as usual. When they were ready to fail back, they notified Unitrends and they helped. we helped them with that graceful fail back to restore operations to that Lakeland site. Uh, safety also declared earlier this year in 2019 uh, with the approach of Hurricane Dorian, another storm that really threatened to impact their operations. You can read more about their experience on Unitrends.com. Uh, safety products, the case study there for that Unitrends DRAS. But again, just one one customer that, that we love to mention and, and really demonstrate, and, and for a lot of folks, again, that that DR service is not just um, an expensive insurance policy. In a lot of cases, organizations are using it. The only other thing that I, that I wanted to mention is with the SLAs that we are providing, they are contractually guaranteed. There's fiscal penalty or resource uh, recourse to Unitrends with that with those levels of service. We have never missed an SLA in our seven plus years of performing DR as a service. The longest it's taken us to boot a customer machine was 18 minutes. It was that multi-tiered ERP application. Um, for our customers here. So we've never missed an RTO SLA again. We've got a tremendous amount of confidence um, and proof through that regular testing and the uh, extensive onboarding experience for our users. In part, what's driving both our DR as a service testing as, as well as one of our customers' most uh, favorite features locally is data copy access. And for a lot of organizations that are um, still report not being able to test their backups or test DR as frequently as they would like, data copy access has enabled our users a way to automate or streamline this process. It's application level testing, so we're going beyond screenshot verification. You can test uh, dependency between multiple machines, organized boot, application scripts post-process, test different Windows services such as database engines, Active Directory databases, or Active Directory services, the Microsoft Publishing IIS service, um, really define and ensure that the underlying data and applications are responding. We want to give that visibility into what recovery uh, looks like. So you can leverage the automated testing, but you can also leverage data copy access to spin up an isolated lab environment for DevOps, for QA testing, for sandbox testing, but also once orchestrated, because you can build in some of that organized boot, the re-IP of machines, uh, the reconfiguration of virtual machine CPU and memory, uh, you can orchestrate and have this test orchestrate push button failover to the recovery network as scripted. So we're streamlining and building a lot of automations and, and data copy access in one of our earlier uh, releases is the tool that's powering that for a lot of our users. So you're not 
not just getting results on compliance, recovery point and recovery time actuals within that sandbox environment, but you're getting information into the applications themselves. If there are issues or things that might impede recovery, you're able to automate and get visibility into what that look like, into what that looks like. Hey, VMware Tools is not installed. We're going to be limited in some of our functionality here. Hey, we can't contact uh, the vCenter for vMotion support. This particular query is not producing an expected output. You can customize the scripts in addition to running the 50 plus CAN scripts that we've already preloaded here. But for a lot of our customers, they've absolutely loved the visibility that Data Copy Access has provided, especially coming from a world where they were able to, to test maybe once a year or testing more infrequently. It's something that in an automated fashion, they're able to, to set up, export reports, really have that visibility and that confidence into the status of their backups and what recovery potentially may look like for them. So I apologize here, we got started a moment late and we've gone just a minute over. Um, but before, I've got some, some resources here and some, some takeaways for the audience. Um, but before I share those, I do just want to open up a quick poll before we open up into the Q&A. Um, if based on what we've talked about today or, or from some of your own research or findings here, you'd like to talk more to a uh, Unitrends representative about how our solutions, whether it's cloud, BRES, uh, the local pieces, if you'd like to talk more about um, how we may fit or be able to help you solve challenges across your environment, uh, please do let us know. Um, if you don't want to be contacted this time, we certainly understand. We thank you for uh, joining us here in your, and for your participation. If you'd like one of our representatives to reach out and talk a little bit more about some of the things that we've gone over today, or if you've got other questions, uh, please do feel free to indicate so. I'm um, in our responses here. So I'm going to leave this open as well as putting up some links on the screen. So I'm going to uh, just take down my screen for a moment and put these into the chat. So we've got a number of resources um, on our website that you can leverage. Uh, so our, oh, that's the Q&A here. So we've got a number of resources on our website that you can leverage here. Um, we do have free trial software, and it is full feature. So you can run our Enterprise Plus Edition software, including that data copy access and recovery testing with that trial software. You can also um, <clears throat> You can also visit um, us for future virtual um, events. We do a lot of in-market events. We'll be starting those back up uh, early next year. So at unitrends.com backslash events, you can keep tabs on the goings on there. I also want to post in that hidden risks checklist. Uh, this was a big part of our campaign when we were looking into some of the issues um, and errors with recovery failures or recovery testing. Um, you can check that out, that checklist as well, as well as my email address. If you have any feedback or any questions um, for me or would like to, to um, you know, keep in touch, feel free to find me on LinkedIn or, or shoot me an email. Um, you'll find my email address uh, listed there as well. So at this point here, um, I'm going to just put these back up on the screen. I have put them into the chat as well here, but just going to open things up for the Q&A. And um, for, for Ned, thank you so much for joining us. I'm glad that you, that you liked the presentation here. For John, it's always great to see you. I, I recognize you coming in here. Um, always a pleasure to have you on. So happy that, uh, that folks are able to come in and join us. I'm going to open up here, so again, if you've got any questions, questions here. <clears throat> So we do have a question here from um, Jostatha, and he's wondering, how does the Unitrends cloud security compare to on-premise security? So you know, that's a great question, and I'm not sure, um, because it could vary so, so much, um, I don't know that I could compare um, our cloud with, with what you're doing in your environment today. Uh, but what I can tell you is uh, security is something that we take incredibly seriously here at Unitrend. So we talked a little bit about the appliances, the immutable storage, but we also have encryption enabled with these appliances, and you can leverage our AES 256-bit encryption engines, military-grade encryption. With regards to the Unitrends cloud environments, these are SSAE 18 uh, Tier 3 certified data centers. So these uh, data centers have undergone uh, rigorous independent audits and testing uh, to meet the SOC 2 
uh, compliance requirements, around security controls. Um, they are data centers that are fully staffed uh, by badged and um, documented personnel monitored through CCTV, uh, but have regular controls and permissions put in place um, to, to maintain the security of that environment. We have met uh, the SOC 2 Type 2 audit, um, SSA 18, as I had mentioned. We also meet a number of the mandates or the controls required um, by CGIS compliance, uh, HIPAA compliance through leveraging encryption and certain retention policies. There's additional documentation through the cloud uh, FAQ. Uh, in which you can read a little bit more about the controls. Um, but in provisioning and setting up the Unitrends environment, you are going to have a, uh, a dedicated cloud target. We are not sharing uh, the cloud environment, so your, your viewer, your access is only to the uh, hot copy essentially the hot copy cloud environment. So there are going to be certain uh, security keys and access keys that you would input when you're registering in the Unitrends cloud target. Uh, customers are getting unique keys and unique targets uh, so that you have access to your dedicated target. But more information about the controls and the security of the Unitrends cloud data center, you can find online at the Unitrends cloud uh, FAQ. We do have a question here. Uh, what level of technical support is included in the standard SLA? So our standard uh, DR as a service is a best effort SLA. So what we're looking at here is a Q-based system. Um, our folks aren't going to kind of, you know, if they receive that phone call and it's a, a no SLA, they're not going to, you know, finish up lunch and, and play a, uh, you know, and take a, a walk around the building. Um, they're going to get to initiating that boot sequence. A lot of our customers on that standard level of service report being up within um, 4 to 24 hours. So the way that that queue-based system works is that you will have um, that queue here. And if there's a larger scale disaster that has knocked down a number of our customers along the Gulf Coast, for example. Premium machines are prioritized at the top of the queue, followed by elite, followed by standard. But again, if you're the only customer making that declaration at that time, uh, we are going to get to initiating that boot sequence as quickly as possible. So in a lot of cases, folks are reporting uh, being back and having access to those systems relatively quickly. We are leveraging some aspects of our technology through our instant recovery, um, the creation of replicas, depending on your service level agreement, to ensure that we're meeting those RTOs. So we do say uh, best effort, but uh, you do have same access and the same Cloud Cores team, uh, whether you're enrolled in premium, elite, and or standard. So the only difference differences in the SLA and where you're placed into that queue and how those would be processed. You've got the same level of expertise uh, with all of those providers here. We do have a request for high availability features, and I, I would agree with you, uh, Lahiru, that some of the, the features that folks are developing, such as the, the continuous uh, data replication, are, are really popular. It's some really cool technology. Um, we've implemented a couple of others. We really strove to develop uh, some new features this year. So we've got some exciting features in 10.4 from our fan out replication and application aware uh, processing with our image level agent. Essentially essentially VSS folds, some really nice <clears throat> um some really nice features I would encourage you to check out, but always keep an eye on the roadmap there. High availability certainly could be something uh, that we are looking at into uh, next year. Uh, question from Jonathan. Uh, they're a Canadian owned and operated company who's primarily doing uh, business within the U.S., but the requirements vary. So John, in that case, we do have customers, and Exco Engineering is, is one that we talk about a lot. They're based in uh, Newcastle, just outside side of Toronto. And um, for the Unitrends Cloud, we do adhere strictly to those laws of data sovereignty. So we will not replicate data outside of the country of origin. So in answer, the, the short answer to your question, does that cloud service provide granularity to specify where the data is being stored unequivocally, unequivocally and absolutely yes. If there is data that needs to be retained within the U.S., that is backed up within the U.S. and needs to be retained there, we will only be landing those um, 
that data within a U.S. target. We do have uh, redundant data centers within Canada as well. So data that is originating and needs to be retained within the country of that origin, uh, we are adhering strictly to those laws of data sovereignty. We've got a number of customers uh, that are in a similar scenario or not unlike yourselves that have had to uh, work with that hurdle, but we will clearly document and provide you with that granularity and specification on what cloud targets or what cloud data centers the uh, backup copies are being retained within. Uh, so Stephen, just looking to uh, clarify, so for failed drives in an appliance, the drives will need to be automatically sent out, no contact being needed. And see, that is correct. Uh, this was an implementation with our Generation 8 hardware. So if you're running a recovery series uh, in which the model number would start with an 8, such as uh, an 8010 or an 8002, uh, with Gen 8, we released the implementation of those self-healing drives. Gen 8 was released, it was the middle of of uh, last year, I believe. So for about the last year and a half, uh, we have had that self-healing technology um, available. Gen 8 was released in, I want to say it was the summer of 2018, so yes. Um, those drives, if it does notice that a sect is starting to fail or go bad, it phones home to our support center. We will automatically overnight a new drive with instructions on how to hot swap that drive. You can call up support and they will walk you through how to um, adjust, how to adjust or how to swap that out. So that's excellent. I, I really appreciate all of the input. It looks like that is the bulk of uh, the questions that we had today. Um, so again, thank you all for, for being able to join. For the folks in here still wishing me a, a happy holiday, um, the same to you as well. Um, if you're observing um, Hanukkah or Christmas or another holiday here in the U.S. or elsewhere, um, have a great holiday season. We really appreciate it. Um, again, keep an eye out in your email uh, for those uh, uh, gift card and prize winners. Uh, we will be sending those out shortly uh, following the conclusion of today's presentation. Um, but again, want to wish you all